hey, here's the best news about the whole deal. If legalism's wrong and lawlessness is wrong, there's got to be a path that's right. And it is. And it's called life in the Spirit. Everybody knows this. John chapter 3, when you were born again, you were born again of the Spirit. Here's what happened that never happened in the Old Testament. When a person truly believes Jesus is the Savior and, and died and rose again in all the gospel message, when they accept that, that work of the cross, something supernatural happens on the inside of a person. The Holy Spirit of God, the same one that lived in Jesus, not a little mini one, not a little alternate version, the same Holy Spirit that lived in Jesus now comes to live in you. I don't think we get that because if we do, we'd be shouting, that's crazy good news. That's amazing. I can't even comprehend the same spirit that Jesus Christ used on the planet is the one he gave me. Whoa, man, oh man. We're going to get into some of this. This is good. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has become. And if you really study that out, it even goes as far as to say you have become a new species, a new something that didn't even exist. Have you ever heard somebody that's struggling with sin? And I'm not picking because I've done the same thing, but I had a family member come up to me one time and they were just, you know, they just didn't want to change basically. And they said, well, I'm only human. And I said, I'm not. I said, I have the Holy Spirit in me. I used to be only human. Are you getting that? You can't use that one. Well, I'm only human. Well, you used to be only human. Now you're human plus Holy Spirit. <laughs> you're getting that. This will set you free. My goodness, I love the word. Hey, you know, at the end, JT started singing about God washing us in the word. Well, it's, it's happening. He was prophesying what's happening right now. It's one continuous flow of the spirit. We are getting a word bath. And my goodness, it's helping us. Romans 2, 28 through 29 for you are not a true Jew because you were born of Jewish parents or because you've gone through the ceremony of circumcision. No, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by God's spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. Here, here's the one thing that you cannot do by yourself. You cannot change yourself. You can behave for a little while in front of people, but the real you's still there, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, we can all behave for five minutes. But only the Holy Spirit can change your heart to where I used to be this angry person, and now I'm just not. I don't have to, like, like, like fake it and try not to be angry. It's just the Holy Spirit has changed that part of me. Are, are you getting this? And this is a lifelong walk. We get this. But I promise you, the Holy Spirit can fix and change every little character flaw you got. Now, you can't fix a one of them. But that should be great news. Quit trying. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Let him do the works. What he does, that's his full-time occupation. That's all he does. Anyway, we're going to go further. This word is making me so happy this morning, guys. This, does the Bible just, like, you feel it stirring up your spirits, getting strong? All right. We're wimpy and weak when we're not in the word, but when you get in the word, you get strong. Anyway, let's keep going. Romans 7, 6, but now we have been released from the law. There's the legalism. For we died to it and no longer are captive to its power. Now we can serve God not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. See, these people that are trying to convert you back to Judaism, they missed the turn 2,000 years ago. It already happened. The old way is gone. The new way is life in the Spirit. Because there's only one person that can live this thing, and it's Jesus. And you know where Jesus is? He's in me. You know who he is? The Holy Spirit. Christ in me, the hope of glory. That is the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of Christ. That's the only way Christianity works. Not by a bunch of human striving. Anyway, we're going to keep going. Some light bulbs are coming on. 8, 1 and 2, Romans. Now, hey, Romans 8 is probably one of the best chapters. Anybody that's read the Bible will go, wow, Romans 8 is awesome. I mean, it's just, it's so slam, it's what I call a loaded baked potato. It's just slam full. It's got it all in there. Romans 8, 1 and 2. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. You're struggling with sin? Get more filled up with the Holy Spirit. I want to just tell you something kind of funny, but it's true. Have you ever tried to sin and speak in tongues at the same time? 
I promise you it ain't going to happen. He just he drives out darkness, man. If, you're, if you are wrestling, and look, I am just a person like the rest of you. We all struggle in life. We all have temptations. We all have sins we deal with. But when you feel like the pressure's on, if you start praying the Spirit, it, stuff just goes. It's like, oh, I can't hang with that. It's too hot. Stuff will back off. You need to hear what I'm saying. That's the, that's the big key. Romans 8, 5 through 10. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. See, he's showing the two ways you could go with that. The lawlessness or the Spirit. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature cannot please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember, those that do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. You cannot be saved outside of the Holy Spirit living in you. You know that's actually what makes you a saved person is that the Holy Spirit lives in you. There's only one difference between you and a lost person. You got the Holy Spirit in there and they don't. That is really the difference. We're all flesh and blood the same. But the Holy Spirit gets in there and starts really changing stuff. That's the whole key to this gospel. Do you realize, I'm just going to take a rabbit trail. All of these world religions, I don't care what it is, Buddhism, Hinduism, Muslim, you could, you could go down every one of them. They are all behavior modification, external, I got to change something from the outside in. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only gospel, the only message that puts God in you and then he works himself out. Are you getting that? That's what was wrong with, with legalism. You were trying to change yourself from the outside in through human effort and striving, and it will never work. And Jesus said, it is better that I go away so I can send the Holy Spirit. He can get in you and work it out. That's the best news I've ever heard. Somebody get excited about that. Come on. Romans 8, 11 through 14. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Let's just park there. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, the same one that got him up, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Now let me tell you what, if, if, if God asked you to live a holy life and didn't give you the Holy Spirit, that would just be mean. You get what I'm saying? But if God asks you to live a holy life and gives you the very best he's got, all the tools in the toolbox, all he's got, he gives it to you. That's a little bit more fair, isn't it? <laughs> trying to get us to, to think because you know we go through this thing and I've been through this season well God it's just so hard he never said it was going to be easy that's not part of the package the easy gospel is usually off it's off track somewhere there is a price to pay it's your life it costs you everything to follow Jesus and the further you go you find that out more and more but it is the only true life on planet earth Therefore, dear brothers and sisters you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do for if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. God gave us power. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. I'm going to keep reading a few more of these. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And what Paul was talking about there is they were talking about, well, you can't eat this and you can't eat this. And if you eat that, you're, you're, you're lost. And if you do that, and he said, forget it. It ain't about eating and drinking. It's about, is the Holy Spirit in there? And is he producing righteousness and peace and joy in your life? If that's happening, you're okay. Even if you eat bacon. If the Holy Spirit is producing righteousness and peace and joy in you, you're on track. Anyway, man, this is, man, the word is so good. But it was to us, 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For the spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Just got a couple more of these here. 2 Corinthians 3, 6. He has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is a covenant not written of written laws, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. 
So Paul, everywhere he preached, he bashes legalism and he bashes lawlessness and he preaches life in the Holy Spirit. 